And we have several ships which are out of date, which need to be upgraded. And will cost resources. Right, that's the other thing we need to take a look at is trade. We are currently positive in terms of oil. We are positive in terms of aluminium, rubber, so we have no production of rubber. We're negative in chrome, no, tungsten, and steel. So we're going to have to buy steel from someone. Let's go and do that. And I guess we want to buy it from Germany to keep them sweet. Although early on, we are going to need to be careful that Britain doesn't just declare war on us. You think it's battleship... Cruiser... Destroyer? Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So the cruisers are basically your frontline ship. At least one bombers... Uh, one fighter to cover the Netherlands. That is true. We are going to want some of those. Unfortunately, we only have interwar ships. No, no, screw that. We need to research them first. I'm most concerned about what I want my dockyards to do. Let's actually take a look. Actually, let's get all of our armies together and start you drilling. Nope, I'm ready for one of the hockeys. Okay, okay. So the entire army is drilling. We probably... Nope, we don't actually have any other infantry. Benelux, Benelux, these are in Indonesia. Do we not have troops over here? We don't. These are puppet troops. Okay, so Indonesia has some of our forces, but we do have a couple of navies over there, which I think I'm going to send home. Oh, right. Ports can only maintain a certain number of ships now as well. Naval base size matters, though I don't know exactly how. That's another thing that's changed. Ah, yes. Another thing that's changed is there is now a naval overview using the theatre system in the same way as there was for armies. So we can actually click on and see the different theatres and then which ships are in those theatres. So these are my Dutch fleets, no, Netherlands fleets, and then these are my Indonesian fleets. And you can assign admirals to them. So the Koninklijke Marine is going to be commanded by Elfric. Naval speed and damage, leader experience, submarine attack, positioning. Caustic personality, number of ships in first contact minus 25%. Yeah, that's not great. Good chance of retreating, good at anti-air. Naval speed and damage. Naval lineage, increased first contact, less chance to retreat. Good at screening. Well, our best fleet, best commander by far is Helfrich. He's actually really good. Plus, he's a level 5 damage. Defense 2, skill three fleet positioning fleet speed when retreating fleet coordination so i think helfrich is going to be in charge of the colony cloak of marine and then probably mr runaway johannes theodorus forstner he's going to be in charge of that one so they can withdraw if they feel outgunned Hey, Grigor observes. No convoys. I have 150. We don't need more. Not yet, anyway. I feel like I really need to invest more time than I would like in working out exactly what all the different naval variants are. So we've got the Sioba class, which is the coastal defense ship. They are... Destroyers? No, we're saying they were heavy cruisers. Right, that icon's a cruiser, so they are cruisers. Why are these blanked out? Design lacks one or more required modules. Oh, you can choose it yourself. 
how they're assigned. And you are considered a capital ship. So the Sorbias are my biggest. The Zorotas are... Why does it not display capital ship status on this screen? I feel like it should. So the Dorotas are light cruisers because they don't have the big guns. They're using the mid-sized ones. They have anti-air. They have fire control. Ah, yes. This is that fire control icon. Central range fighting. Light attack, heavy attack. Okay. They don't have radar. Right, radar. Okay, that's another thing that becomes available. They've got good engines. No secondaries. And these guys do use float planes, which the Shurbas don't. Then the Van Halen. Whoops, you need to build that. Our destroyers, they have got depth charges, fire control. Alright, so if we are planning on going toe to toe with the British. We're going to be the ones fighting the Royal Navy. So if Germany wants to do submarines, Germany can do submarines. I'm not going to. We are, however, going to follow the same naval doctrine that Germany did with the armored cruisers. Huzzah! So we're going to go for really, really fast, relatively well armored, but not necessarily heavy gunned ships. Don Bassos, thank you very much for the resub. A year and a half now. Ahoy, Capitan. For what? Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Resub. Nice one. So, out of the Dorotas and the Surabayas, which do I like more? You do have rather good speed. Rather slower. Whoops. So I think the Dorotas for now are going to be my main ship, though I don't want them all to have float planes. There's no point in that. And we could be packing armor on them, but we haven't been doing so just yet. It reduces their speed, but not by a huge amount. Also, we can't right now because we have naval, naval experience, so making these tweaks right now is a little bit silly. So let's take a look at the naval repair queue. No ships awaiting repairs, can support 5 repairs, can support 10 repairs, 3, 1, 1. Okay. Ah, oh, of course, Curacao. We're going to need to do something about holding on to Curacao. Probably just fortifying it as if it were Malta. Oh, and these are all of the Indonesian ports. Okay. So how come Holland has two naval bases? Because it's done on provinces rather than the entire territory. Okay. Now we did have a bunch of ships which are outdated. Is there a way of seeing which ones those are easily? Well basically anything which is not a Van Halen, a Dorota or a Soibaya. So if we go to our ships, oh, task forces, that's another thing which has changed, cool. But I want to just see what ships are in your task forces. So we have a Hertog Hendrik, a Sorbayan van Halen, so this one is something else. And I'm curious how they differ. The Hendrik is slower, same range, same org, tougher, same reliability. The Hendrik is actually just a bigger ship, does more damage. No, it's not. It's a torpedo boat. It's a slow but tough torpedo ship. Right, Pride of the Ship. Pride of the Fleet is another thing we can select. 
Pride of the Fleet gives you war support, but if it gets sunk, then it's very, very bad. Huzzah! Like the HMS hood. Literal trash person, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime resub. Three months now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Why does Holland have two naval bases? Because that's the only thing they can build in the sea. I mean, yeah, that's true. I was just trying to remember how the mechanics worked. I thought it was just one naval thing per province, but it's not. Just polder the English Channel. Or build a tunnel. Uh, armor is the same, anti-air is the same, so... I guess we do want some torpedo boats just to cause problems, but generally we'll go for the Sorabaya. So the Herzog Hendrix I don't consider to be... obsolete right now. Then we have a bunch of K3s and O9 subs. Not really going to be investing too heavily in those, so I'm not overly bothered. So by a Java von Kent. Right, so how do you compare to the Van Halen? How can I tell? I can't. Um, so speed's 36, hit points is 25, armor is 0, torpedo attack is 19. We go to this screen. This screen. Oh, I can compare. Oh, sweet. So, speed's the same, range is the same, orcs the same, hit points the same, light attacks the same, torpedoes on the front end is actually higher, depth charge is the same, anti air is lower. So, the P Titan is better at anti ship combat. Slightly, but actually, again, this is not a ship I would consider obsolete. I'm mostly looking for obsolete ships right now to see if there's anything that I need to upgrade in the interim, or we can just start building more ships. And again, submarines don't really care. Okay, so I think that means that we can just start building new ships. We don't need to worry about repairing. So I'm going to reduce the number of shipyards dedicated to repairs, and we're going to start building some more. We probably want the rotors because they're cheap, especially as we have no manpower. In that case, do we want the so buyers because they'll take longer? Production 6,000, production 2,000. Wow, the rotors are a lot cheaper. Rotors are actually tougher though. More hit points. I think we're going to go to Rotors and we're going to see if we can boost their combat ability later. Okay. Uh, we're going to need some more steel. Oh, Germany. Islands in Dubai were held by the Dutch. I don't think so. No. British. Alright, so, is there a way of drilling fleets? Because I think that is something they added. Repair, automatic reinforce, split, repair, engage at medium risk. Right, task forces, that's another thing we really should look. So, fleets are comprised of task forces. A fleet is commanded by an admiral. Each admiral then commands a certain number of task forces under them. Those task forces are the ones that you actually give orders to, and they can be different. So, for example, you can have a task force which is tasked with d d finding the enemy fleets. Then you can have another task force which is your main combat fleet. 
It will not leave port until your recon fleet has found something to fight. They will then call in the reinforcements. That's to, that basically means that you don't always need to have your entire fleet at sea all the time, which is how things used to be in Hearts of Iron. So, the Cunning Cluck of Lot currently not sure what they're doing. But basically you can create a task force template which has different numbers of ships. So for example, your smashy fleet wants to have lots of battleships, battle cruisers, heavy cruisers. Your recon fleets are probably mostly light cruisers and destroyers. And you can also set like mine layer fleets, mine sweeper fleets. Um, there are lots of different things you can have them doing. There's the training. Naval exercises. Order a task force to perform exercise in the region adjacent to the closest naval base. This has a chance to damage the ships over time. The crew will not gain experience once they reach the regular. You will gain naval experience while they are training. So that is something we want to do. So I'm going to say that entire fleet is going to do naval exercises. So is that fleet. And we can see that they're doing exercises here. Okay, cool. I like it. And that is going to mean that we could potentially take some damage. So I am going to allocate an additional factory for repairs. We've also got patrolling. Patrols are selected region. Strike force. Orders task force to wait at the closest naval base until an enemy task force is spotted. Once an enemy is spotted, strike forces will move to that location and will attack the enemy force. So the patrol is your recon, then the strike force is the combat fleet that then sails out to the recon. Convoy raiding is basically submarines uh, used to kill enemy convoys. Convoy escorts to protect your own escorts, mine laying, mine sweeping, and then naval invasion support. That's going to be shore bombardment. Which is something that really needed to exist and for some reason didn't. It does now. Watch the fuel. Uh, with the Dutch, I'm not actually worried about fuel consumption. We have the biggest refineries in the world. The Dutch are probably, at the start of the game, actually the best equipped to have high numbers of motorized, mechanized forces. Our problem is going to be maintaining those supply lines. We, we need to do something to allow our convoys through, which is why I'm not bothering with... Um, Submarines. Yeah, shore, bomb shore bombardment did exist before, but there was no way of assigning naval vessels to a naval invasion. Now there seems to be. The Danes want to have a word with me about doing naval maneuvers in their waters. Sure, they're welcome to join us. We can all be Vikings together. Right, I think I've, I've actually done it. I think I've actually done it. I'm ready to unpause. Two hours into this stream, and I'm ready to unpause. So I am sorry about how long this took, but I'm kind of relearning this as we go. Let's start at speed three, we can always bump it up after. Okay, all of those ships are going off and training, which is great. And we are generating one experience a day. Fantastic. And now immediately our fuel supplies shoot up. Because like I said, we actually have very good fuel production. We currently have 33,000 in the bank. We gain 1,300. And we can store up to 127,000. Because we have some pretty big fuel stockpiles in Curacao. With current production, we'll reach full capacity in 5.6 months. Then I think we can start selling it. No, you can sell oil. You can't sell fuel. Really? Oh, okay. Noted. So one of the things we will definitely want to do before war breaks out is fortify Curacao. We may even want to assign an army over there right now. Right, how do I switch to my army overview? Uh, 
Aha! You click on the army. Yeah, Commandant. Dutch voices. So we need to choose who the general is going to be. We currently have one marshal, which is Isaac Reinders. He is old guard, so he has less experience gain. He is an inflexible strategist and he's reckless. So in other words, he's kind of crap. He's good at reducing supply consumption, but yeah, that's not what I'm really worried about. Gottfried von Vorst tot Vorst. Von Vorst tot Vorst? From Vorst to Vorst? Interesting name. Politically connected, he gains less experience, but he promotes cheaper. He's a brilliant strategist, career officer, and armor officer. So I think that Gottfried might actually want to become our field marshal. And then Petrus Wilhelm Best. Petrus Wilhelmist Best. The Best Wilhelmus. Which is also the name of the Dutch national anthem. Um, not Best. I mean, it is obviously the best anthem is actually called the Wilhelmus. Uh, he can command bigger armies, so he can command up to a 30 force. That's pretty good. He is a good defensive commander. Von Vorst, Todd Vorst. It's really good. Am I generating any command power? We're generating a tiny amount. So I think for the time being, I'm going to put you in charge. You will be losing a little bit of experience when I promote you. I guess for the time being, just so we're not wasting experience, we can bring Isaac in, but he's really not very good. Best is also a place in Brabant. Okay. Don't stats reset when promoted to Field Marshal? I don't think so. I think they lose some traits. Yeah, if you have general traits, I think earned traits you can have regardless of what you are. And then field marshal traits you can only have if you're a field marshal. Maybe. Because that's definitely not lost. That's not lost. That's not going to be lost. Yeah, I think it's only when we actually take general traits, those would be lost. So we just need to not take general traits until he's promoted. Yeah, Commandant. You training? Good training. Good man. Yes, you do lose a level, I know that. But I'm okay with that. Acceptable loss. Oh, air forces. We probably have one. Twelve planes. But I believe that air forces can also do exercises. Gain experience on this wing. So wings have experience fighting together. That's another new thing with Man the Guns is your air force can gain experience, which they didn't used to. When the air wing takes damage, it loses experience. Loss is reduced by 30% over friendly territory. Basically, as the pilots can bail out. I wonder if that's modified by any focuses or anything like that. Like pilot training. Pilot survival training. Huzzah! Kalinus! Coming in with the five months in a row. Only one month away from the uh, half a year. Early balls, five months. Damn, that's amazing. Indeed it is. Thank you so much for that, Kalinus. Fuel consumption, 15 a day. So we're still gaining 1,300 a day, and we're consuming 835 a day. Yeah, we're fine. No problem. It does mean that we would start with a lot less fuel reserves, but who cares, I think. I'm going to regret saying that now. I'm absolutely going to regret saying that. So what could we do in Curacao? It's got the fuel silo. Synthetic refinery provides rubber and fuel gain from refineries plus 48. Fuel gain would be modified by 10% to a total of 52 because we have fuel refinery on one. 
Alright, so that's also a way of us getting rubber. Now, are there any just bog standard refineries? Fuel silos just allow me to stockpile more fuel. And yes, those can be captured by enemies and destroyed. No, it looks like synthetic refineries are the only way of refining oil. That doesn't seem likely. The other thing we probably want to do in Curacao is increase the infrastructure, because infrastructure will also modify the amount of fuel and stuff we're producing there, and raw materials. Don't forget to build the famous Dutch bicycle divisions. Yeah, we get those, don't we? Yes! The Dutch are one of two nations that can build bicycle battalions. The Japanese being the other one. Huzzah! And what's our unit? Oh, it's actually not terrible. And we don't have any colonial garrisons, so these are all 18 combat with. You know what, that's, that's a pretty good starting size. I'm okay with this. We don't have a lot of them, but they are pretty strong. Don't know what the army to be deployed on the border to dig in and make plans while training. Not yet, because I don't know which way they will definitely need to face. Like, I'm trying to make good with Germany right now, but we are playing on historical, so Germany may still try to attack us. So at some point, we are going to need to get Gateway to Europe, which will allow Germany and the UK to fight over trade influence. And then we can choose whether we want to cave to the Germans or cave to the British. Like, it is my intention to go Axis, but it may not happen, because historical. Just got back this music from the stream. It's from the game. It's probably one of the new tracks. No! Oh. No day night. Bad. From Glen to Glen. I think that is an original. Yeah, these would be the new ones. Shatter the Empire's Confederate flags and Arsenal Democracy. I think those are new. A changing course, I'm not sure. Music, I think, is from the pre-order. Oh, Allied Music Pack. Okay, cool. Your PC lives. Huzzah! Speed 5 this. We're just waiting early game to do things. In fact, this would be an excellent opportunity for me to put in a cut for YouTube, so bear with me just a second. Uh, we'll be back soon, YouTube.